Hey everybody, Thomas here. We've got the ash that I cut a few weeks ago back here on the mill. Based on the way the pith is moving, which this is why I cut it this way, it's, it's starting to really open up right here at the pith. And I, I knew that was gonna happen, so it was always the plan to come back and cut this at some point. What we're gonna do right now is we're actually gonna turn this into two mantles on the top side here and three bench tops on the bottom side. So I'm at six and a half inches, roughly. So I'll split that down the middle. And then uh, on the bottom side here, again, I'll make each of these at three and a quarter, roughly, these two here. The bottom ones down here, we'll be cutting those at just slightly over two inches. And I think that'd be pretty good. I I'm very happy with this stuff's drying thus far. It's maintained a lot of color, but uh, here we go. We'll go ahead and cut this up. My dad's in town. We went ahead and stood this up on here using a tractor and by hand. We've got it where the blade's essentially going to enter. I think I might come down a little bit more. Right now the blade height is at 14 inches. I think we'll come down to, give or take, uh, maybe we'll just say 13. That'd be easy. Lucky number 13. And we'll go ahead and cut that and then go from there. Thanks. All right, camera's in a great vantage point right here, so you'll see that large slab taken off the mill as and hopefully if, if all my calculus, calculations are right the blade should come right underneath that pit Okay, now through the magic of editing, we are actually late to the afternoon. Uh, we had my son's uh, first communion party today. We did that at church this morning. Then we afterwards we cut some, and then we have people come over for lunch and stuff. Now it's late into the afternoon. We're gonna finish cutting up this ash. So what I've done is I've actually set the computer, and we're cutting on the two-inch scale. My first cut down is gonna be about an inch and a half because there was some uh, loss based on the last you know, time I was cutting this and whatever scale I was, I was on. So the first cut will be about an inch and a half. The next cut will have two two inch slabs. That will be great to work with uh, for benches or actually that bottom one, we can probably book match that set together. So we'll see. And then after that, we'll throw on the other piece here, which is gonna be made to the mantle. I'll just split right down the middle in half. We'll go from there, stay tuned.
go ahead and take a look at what we have here. I'm very happy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that first one again is going to be a slightly, either right at or slightly over an inch and a half. This is going to be gorgeous. This might be the bench that I'm going to use for my wife's laundry room. Alright, let's figure out how I can show this. I gotta show the bottom of the book match set, so bear with me one second. Grab my broom or duster. Yeah, this may have to be a real nice cable, and essentially this is all going to be quarter sawn. Now when I was cutting, I did see some movement in the wood, which is always interesting. Uh, and I'll have to show you the other pieces too, because I had to move them up here. When my dad was here in town, I sent him back with a couple of slabs of this. We got some friends up in Tennessee that are subscribers and they kind of watch this and like, ooh. So I'll set him back with a few slabs. And they've got some woodworking projects in mind for them. The way it looks, it looks like that bottom board bowed up in the middle, or this top board, bow, well, it's actually probably a combination of both. This board bowed up, this board bowed up, but by book matching it, it makes it bowed down, so. We'll see. Nothing that's some creative woodworking skills can do. Alright. <laughs> Semi is hauling a big old track hoe. The reveal. Isn't that awesome? It's essentially a book, mass, book matched piece where we took the pith out. It does have spalt on both sides, but there is no pith in this wood. And check out this. All these growth rings, they're all straight. This and this piece are quarter sawn pieces. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous that that color in there And the stuff that's dried or drying I should say it looks great, too Here's the other piece that came off This could be like the matching bench to go with the table I don't know we shall see this one being slightly thinner Just over an inch and a half. I mean just look at that spot down there That just that's awesome Alright, so now we've got these cut, we've got to come back over to this big hunkin' mantle piece, which right now, when I looked at my measurement on the sawmill, it's actually not at six and a half inches, it's six and an eighth inches, so essentially if we cut this in half, we'll have two three inch pieces, and then a little bit of change, it'll be maybe like a sixteenth or something in there, so I'll put it to the three inch scale, and we'll see what we cut out of this, that should be pretty dang close there might be a slight variation there but that is oh I looked at it earlier I don't know if I said it was 10 inches across the face that'd be a nice piece of mantle or that could even be a mat that could be the benches that could be the bench tops for something so we'll see and as always we've got our fire going that was uh leftovers from moving my log yard around I actually cleaned up a whole lot with the log yard it doesn't really look like it but I organized and gave myself some room between each of these piles. So I can drive my tractor between here, drive my tractor between there. Can't drive my tractor between there right now. <laughs> I've got a weird pile over there. But anyways, I, I had three piles right there and I just kind of spaced them out a little bit more. It helped. And I've started to separate my species a little bit better. <laughs> Still not great. Tupelo gum and bay. Knotty pine for walls. Those are some logs that a customer dropped off. Those are some logs that a customer dropped off. 
the back two piles over there those were both pine that pile is post cedars anything I can make posts out of the pile behind that is uh, water oak the pile with the big ash on top of it is sycamore then I have my longer pieces there that are like in the 20 foot range of just whatever then some mix match stuff over there and then the far pile over there another customer dropped off those I've got quite a few loads I've got to cut up for people but I got to show you this this is uh, pretty amazing how this has turned out thus far it has retained a lot of color that I like to see my, again I sent back my dad with a couple slabs so these are the ones that I kept the biggest slab there at the bottom being 26 and a half 27 inches it does have a small check on that side but again nothing that uh, someone who does epoxy can do and I'll see if I can put a link to it there's a guy who talks about air drying wood and the science behind air drying wood and making your wood smile now two of the pieces on here are not smiling that's okay I'll, I'll come back and fix it this piece right here is frowning and one of these other this one I don't know. I, I, I can't tell right now. But long story short, I'll see if I put a link in there. It goes into the science behind air drying wood and how to do it properly. But what I also learned about ash is it dries insanely fast. And I can testify to that because that top piece there, which is just at over two and a half inches, it's almost three inches thick, was when I took it off the mill probably around 200 pounds. Right now it feels like it's maybe 90 pounds. So I. Well, I, I'm, I may be exaggerating, but long story short, it, it does feel a lot lighter. But let's get back to what we're working on here, and we'll get those last two slabs cut up. Okay, so we're on the last cut here. My initial intention was to make this six and one eighth inch thick hunk of wood into two three inch mantles. Then my wife who is, is really good on thinking things through and helps to kind of, you know, ground me sometimes on some of my crazy ideas, said, well, a three inch thick mantle is not really that beefy of a mantle. And based on the fact that we're gonna be about 11 inches across the face, maybe even a little bit more on the one side, it's best if I only try to shoot for one mantle, a four inch mantle, which is a, a common size that I do sell. A four by 10 is pretty common which would give me one more slab off the top of this at two inches thick. So that's the route we're gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and put it onto the four inch scale on the computer on the sawmill. And that top slab should be somewhere in the neighborhood of a two and you know, three sixteenths, or excuse me, that wouldn't be three sixteenths, it'd be two and a sixteenth or something like that. Um, or just slightly over that. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Uh, I will shoot this from a different vantage point because I haven't shown it for a while. We'll shoot it from the uh, the control station back there so you can see how I set the uh, computer up. Here we go. Okay, so we're back here at the control station where all the magic happens. I'm trying to keep the log in view up there. It is going to be a bit blurry, and it's mostly going to focus on my controls. But that's fine, because I want to show you kind of what I'm doing here. Now, you won't be able to see... We'll fix that. We'll see if we can show all the controls. There we go. So again, check out my video on the controls of the... 2000 or any Timber King that has the advanced set works from the 2000 to 2200. The only one is slightly different is 2500. Again, this is forward and back. This is log stops up and down. Front tow board. This is the log spike. This is the chain turner. It actually turns uh, left and right. This is the chain log turner up and down. This is the log spike in and out. And then this is the uh, rear tow board. This is the uh, log loader which I rarely use uh, because of the tractor and then this is of course the head up and down so without further ado here we go we've got the water running go and crank this up first thing I gotta do is I gotta take my, my log stops so see the log stops lower down since I've got a square edge we'll go and take them all the way down the next thing I'm gonna do is take my log spike bring it up and then bring it over I know I've got four inches to work with, so we'll shoot kind of below four inches, somewhere probably in like the three inch range. So get the log spike in, it's almost ready to cut. What I'll do is I'll bring the head up to it, bring it up to it, close to, 
All right, we'll go into my computer right here. I'm going to set it up. So I was cutting five and a half inch the other day. Okay, right, let's just uh, let's adjust it to and uh, we'll adjust it five and a half. Okay. So now I'm in the computer mode here. We'll bring that down to four inches. It's kind of a slow process, but uh, I wanted to show you how this computer works. Uh, four sixteen, four inches. All right. So we'll go ahead and hit set return. So we set that point. The, the sawmill knows what height is that. And it'll hit auto saw down, and it'll go to that four inch increment. So now I know when I cut. My bottom board beneath the blade will be four inches, which is pretty awesome. That set work system is phenomenal. Now, I'll put the headphones on, get the water runner, we'll engage the clutch at a, a, your idle speed, then we'll bust up the throttle to full throttle, we'll begin, cut, begin cutting. So, <laughs> good thing I did that because that board, it's hard to tell in the video, we'll come up here close by to it, that board bowed like crazy. I'll turn off the water here. The folks at Timber King added this nice little control valve here that adds a little more fine tuning rather than this knob up here. When I first started off on the sawmill, this is all you had. It's like, it's essentially on or off. This right here lets you fine tune a little bit more. I like that. All right. See if you can see this. <laughs> that top board, whoo! She probably popped up an inch on either side, but when it was going through, it was probably, you know, based on that, almost two inches up. So, what we'll probably do is that'll be turned into two small benches. We'll cut it in half, release some of that pressure, uh, and go from there. But yeah, I'm very happy with my wife's idea of keeping this one at four inches and this top one a little bit thicker than that. This would be a fantastic mantelpiece because at four inches thick, it won't be really doing any movement. It'll only be that, uh, the thinner one. It'll be the sacrificial one. I'm not gonna lie, ash smells pretty good. It has, I know this is gonna sound stupid, it has a sweet woody smell to it. <laughs> uh, it, it doesn't smell like any other wood I've cut. It just smells good. I, I would not mind having something made out of this, like inside of a closet or something like that. It actually smells pretty good. Uh, oak, when you cut it, uh, it can smell one or two ways. It can smell really bad. If it's been sitting for a while and kind of sour, or it can smell like uh, fermented fruit, like you would have in a wine barrel, thus, something like that. So, overall, we end up getting out of that huge hunking piece. We'll call this a bench top too. Four bench tops and then one mantle. I'm happy with that. This one being the thickest one of all. And I could actually probably cut this one in half. Like I said, relieve some of that pressure. It's in that, that board there and make two small entry benches or something. I don't know. Very happy with it overall. Saw it perform great. Had to change out a blade. So this last uh, cut here was with a new blade and it was cutting through it like butter. So again, great day today, very uh, busy day. We had family in town. We had, uh, you know, for Tommy's first communion, that was a great time. I'll turn the camera around so I can talk to someone. But um, it was a great day, got to see some family. It was a short, quick visit, but while they're here, uh, we got to pick some blueberries from a blueberry farm, Donaldson Farm over in Basin, Mississippi, awesome place. And we went down to Buzzard's Roost area on the Pascal River. The water's way up. Um, but we went down there to try... I'd seen it before, hadn't tried it. There's an artesian well right next to it. 
If you've ever been to St. Augustine and drinking from the Fountain of Youth, you'll know what I'm talking about. It tasted like sulfur water. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I saw some people filling up water bottles. I drank uh, about a half a bottle. I'm like, I've had my fill. I'm good. <laughs> um, it was nice, cool water, but uh, I'm just not big on that sulfur flavor. <laughs> And then uh, what else did we do? We, we, we had a lot of uh, friends and family over afterwards. Had a fantastic lunch that my wife and mother-in-law and, and mom prepared. It was just a great day. Great weekend. I mean, I just couldn't be happier. So hope everyone's doing well. Uh, again, I appreciate all the subscriptions and the likes. I'm just enjoying doing this. I don't have any, uh, I don't want any gains from this. I just enjoy putting stuff out there so people can, you know, see what I'm doing out here on the farm. We got to work on the shop some more. That's been, uh, we were supposed to work on it this weekend, but you know, we had other more important matters to take care of. We will get caught up on that uh, next week. So stay tuned. We'll see you around and there's just so much more to come. I, it's just so much more to come. We'll see you around. Thanks.